Hello, lovely people of the internet, and welcome back to another BitRep TNG. Um, this game today is a game that I played just recently against my lovely friend Harry, who is a Pacific Northwest Portland local and an excellent player up here. Um, been taking you through his list shortly. Um, he is notorious for playing Firstborn Salamanders, and this list does not disappoint. It is a really awesome list, actually, uh, kind of using some of the new, or not relatively new, Firestorm rules that are in the Marine Codex. So this is my first time playing against Firestorm. It was a really, I think it's a really cool uh, aesthetic and take on uh, the Salamanders, kind of focusing on a transport shooting style, which is pretty damn cool. So big fan of this attachment and, uh, and of Harry's list. So... And uh, to going up against this, going up against the Green Menace, I am playing the Green as well. I'm playing the Orcs, baby. Let's go. Green on Green fight. And we're going to see which one of us is uh, a, is the is the greater Green in this game. So it should be a lot of fun. We are playing today on Sweeping Engagement, Taken Hold, and uh, what's it called? Hidden Supplies. So the middle objective is going to split into two here. We can see that we have six objectives strung all across the map and it's hold one, hold two, hold three. So there should be plenty of opportunities for us all to get some primary, but a little bit of a spoiler. Neither of us actually manages to max our primary here. So lots of opportunities for points, but also lots of opportunities for denial as well. So should be a pretty interesting game and I'm excited to share this one with you all. So. Taking you real quick through the orc list, um, won't be spending too much time here because it's very much like what I've been playing recently. We've got Gaskell Thraka. He's somewhat new, but he basically just amps the wog turn because he gives your army a 12 inch orb lethal hits um, and hits absurdly hard. He's really nice into things like AOC, so that should be good money this game. We'll see how he does. We got Mazrog. We've got a war boss with Follow Me Lads and a Nobot Smash Scoop with that Wapa Skill Chopper. For the meat and potatoes, we've got six Squig Hog Boys, three Hoss Squig Hog Boys, and three more Squig Hog Boys. The six will be joining the Nobon Smasher Squig. They'll be in reserve looking to use the Rapid Ingress Stratagem. Um, we've got two squads of 10 Beast Naga Boys. One of these squads I forgot to deploy. They are riding in a truck, and they're just going to go behind my home field ruin just to be uh, not to try to game it too much. And then right at the kind of apex, the kitty corner of those two big ruins that are in my DZ, I've got that knob. Uh, or I've got the knob truck. So 10 knobs joined to the follow me lads war boss and they'll be riding in that truck. Two squads of 10 Gretchen, one here on the home field objective and one here in this truck looking to do some early game primary denial. And then four trucks. Um, so nice diverse orc build, two squads of storm boys as well to do some scoring. So pretty well-rounded orc build, lots of hard hitting units, lots of meat and potatoes, lots of scoring. Should be a good uh, fun game. Relatively well balanced. For Harry's list, I'm a big fan of this. It is Salamander's Firestorm Assault Force. So using the correct chapter with the correct attachment. Big fan of that. We've got Vulcan Histan himself, the Chad. He's joining a squad of company heroes. This unit is amazing. Super cool. Lots of OC. Pretty tough. Loves just kind of hanging out in the mid ward. So I'm a big fan of that unit. That They will be joined by three Assault Centurions and a Land Raider Redeemer. I love the Assault Centurion choice. Uh, it's a bit unconventional, but they're pretty good at punching uh, like medium vehicles and that kind of thing. So love that choice there. We've got three Rhinos. Ordinarily, each one of those Rhinos will have a Devastator squad in it with two last cannons and two multi meltas. Sergeant with a Power Fist Grav Pistol. So that's a pretty cool little firing package with advanced shoot from Assault uh, Firestorm. And then uh, the reroll to wound from Vulcan's point and click. Flamer and Melted Weapons get uh, reroll wounds against a target every turn. Some nice damage coming out of them with the firing deck ability. And then uh, a squad of 10 tactical marines, which breaks up into two combat squads. They're just there for being bodies and playing the mission. We've got five scouts, which in this game will start in that middle rhino, just to give it the scout ability. Two squads of 10 vanguard veterans joined by two captains on with jump packs. And that is it, I believe. Just running through things mentally. Yep, that's it. So these Vanguard Veterans are pretty cool because they have lethal hits on the charge. The Captain gives them plus one strength, so it's a nice little combo to do some more melee damage when they charge. And uh, the Firestorm has, I think, five of its six stratagems are battle tactics. 
And in particular, there's one that gives them devastating wounds, which is a battle tactic. So that, um, and that you ordinarily cost two CP on the flame weapons uh, to do dev, but the captain will make it free once per battle round. So it should be really good money this game to be able to shoot those 11 flame pistols in, get the rear owned a wound from Vulcan, and just turn on devastating wounds for free and slap a bunch of mortals on something. It's honestly like a little mini immortal bomb. Uh, not nearly as many mortal wounds, but uh, with the same reliability, right? Because it's just getting a bunch of hits that all, you know, have a roughly one third chance to do a mortal wound, which is pretty damn sick. So looking forward to seeing how they do here. Harry has one squad of those guys off the board as a rapid and ghost threat, and we're going to see how they do this game. So enough preamble. Let's get into things. Uh, Harry took tactical. I took tactical. Neither of us really gives up enough kills to, uh, to, to warrant taking a kill secondary. Sweet. So we roll off here. Let me get the recording going. And orcs are usually looking to go first. Harry said he'd be happy to go second, but I'm definitely looking to go first. Our the the wall mechanic just works better when going first. So I'm definitely hoping to go first from the green skinned perspective. Uh and that being said, there will be a lot of primary contests in the early to mid game. So getting that end of game 15, if you have assets alive, is going to be pretty big here. So nice. Hopefully we can figure out how to roll our dice here pretty soon. Just talking about a couple of the tech choices from the orcs this, uh, that I've added recently um, that in particular will help out in this game. Uh, the knobs are a unit that a lot of people know at this point is just a hard hitting, super sick, uh, tough as nails orc unit that really just takes more effort to remove than is off. It's often uh, made out to be. Um, I mean, there there are two wound orcs at the end of the day, but with four up armor and minus on the wound, they can randomly just be tougher than your opponent gives them credit for. So they're pretty good, and the big thing is their AP two, right? So into things like Votan and Space Marines, they can really cut through that armor of contempt pretty good. And Gaskell is the other one because he gives that lethal hit or that allows you to punch up into tougher targets. A, which is great because orcs have a lot, a lot of middling strength weapons, so the lethal hit or goes a long way. Uh, he also just is AP three damage four with plus one to hit and wound, and he gives the Mega Knobs plus one to hit and wound as well. With strength thirteen, that means that they can wound really tough things like big knights, land raiders, um, Votan land forts. You know, rhinos, sagittars, that kind of thing. They'll wound all of that on twos with twin linked. So that unit can really just crack most armor of contempt targets uh, in the game, which is something that the rest of orcs just cannot do whatsoever. So I'm really trying to use them here to bully the middle of the table and hopefully just run out on the water and pound whatever target Harry gives me access to that uh, is relatively tough. Sick. So turn one, um, the orcs end up going first here and we're drawing our tactical cards because uh, that's what we both have this game. I draw deploy homers and bring it down. Bring it down uh, ordinarily would be pretty good against Harry because of the four vehicles that he's gonna be and end up using fairly aggressively, but we'll be able to get it on turn one. So not the end of the world. Bring it down, or sorry, deploy teleport home on the other hand. I'm going to get in the mid board for a three. I'm just gonna end up running my storm boys out uh, it's always good to have a plan for how to score certain secondaries. Uh, just deploying your army hidden is not enough in 10th edition anymore, unfortunately. You have to be, if you're running the tactical deck anyway, if you're taking something like Bring It Down Homer or Assassinate Homer, then you can mostly just cobble together a plan as you go. But if you're taking the tactical deck, you need to be thinking about investigate signals when you deploy. You need to be thinking about cleanse when you deploy. You need to be thinking about engage when you deploy. And you need to be thinking about deploy teleport homers when you deploy. Because turn one draws are vital. They can often be the difference between a victory and a loss in a close game. If you had the ability to score a three or a five on a secondary on turn one and you just didn't set up for it, that can be the difference between a win and a loss. And I would never want that to be the reason I lose a game. So um, always good to think about here um, is how you're going to score your early secondary. So I had those five storm boys set up so that they could run out get cleanse on turn one, get Homer on turn one, get area denial turn one with a very minimal investment. Always important to be thinking about that while you're deploying. 
I end up getting fairly aggressive here. I don't push everything out, but uh, I want to be able to try to get some early primary. I know Harry is going to have a primary. Uh, he, I won't say advantage, but he's going to have a better time scoring primary than most uh, Marine opponents that I have, just because he has a lot of bodies. He also has some stuff that's OC2, which is pretty good. Um, and in particular, there's a lot of objectives here, and he's going second. So I'm probably going to be going up against like a 10 on turn four and a 15 on turn five. So I really want to make sure he gets like fives on turn two and three. So um, I push Mazrog up to kind of start forcing him back off this side. And I move my Gretchen truck out here so that hopefully it won't be dying in the shooting phase. And the Gretchen can contest that objective once. And that's a good use of 40 points. Just denying five points in the primary. I'm happy with that. So putting uh, some of my tankier units out and up. I'm not used to the Firestorm advance and shoot. Um, obviously, the Raven Guard, uh, Vanguard, Spearhead, whatever the hell it's called, is much faster and more nimble. But once the models are on the table, being able to advance and shoot is really sick for Firestorm. It gives this, this all this Rhino play a lot more agency because it means you can't just pre-measure 12 inches and be like, you can't see me. You know, that 12 inches could actually be 18. It could be 13. But there's no way for me to accurately plan around these kind of things in advance. So I got I had to take some more risks this game that I just wasn't used to against most Marine players. So end up getting a three on Homer and ditching. Uh, bring it down for a CP. Um, normally that won't stack with the CP you get from Gretchen. But this is something that is not so well known. The Gretchen and Neophyte and um, Guardian Defender ability. Things that force you to be on an objective you control to have an effect in the command phase don't trigger if you go first the reason why is there's no end of a phase at which you control the objective for the ability to trigger right objectives objective control is checked at the end of every phase so during your first command phase name the phase at which during which you held that objective so that it's under your control so that you can proc the ability there was no phase, right? You hold, you start holding that objective at the end of your first command phase. So during your first command phase, you don't get to trigger the ability. Um, this isn't true on the bottom of one. So those Gretchen still were on that objective so that I could, uh, if Harry went first, try to get a CP on the bottom of one, but didn't, uh, I end up going first, so I can't get a CP from them. But luckily I can ditch bring it down and get a CP there. So I'm going up to three now. Going into Harry's turn here, he knows that, um, there's going to be a wall coming on turn two or three. This is going to be a fairly brawl focused game. Like his guys are all close range killers, 12 inch range, 18 inch range and, and melee. And I'm entirely melee. So on turn two or three, we're going to have a big brawl in the middle of the board. A bunch of shit's going to die. And then we're going to see what, you know, what's left at the end and what kind of scraps we can pull together. Um, so his turn one is trying to get me to come out to an extent, but also not putting him in a spot where he's going to get blasted if if I run at him full force. So there's kind of a, a, a turn of measured aggression here from Harry, which I think he does very well. He draws investigate signals and deploy teleport homers. And to be honest, uh, we were talking at the time that this wasn't actually a very, very good draw, but I think it was a fantastic draw now in hindsight because this is the turn where he doesn't really care if he's not shooting. Because all that really, you know, he's he's doing a bunch of actions. Sorry, let me rephrase. This is the turn to draw action secondaries. And the reason why is on future turns, he might want all of those activations to shoot me and charge me and that kind of thing. Now he doesn't really care about any and about shooting me or charging me. There's nothing really to shoot or charge for the most part for most of his units. So getting a three on Homer and a four on investigate. Totally easy. Easy peasy. Knock those out of the way. Get a free seven points. Um, certainly beats my three on turn one. And uh, just take care of that right away. He also wants to make sure that this top left objective is going to be contested. Right? A truck should be pretty easy for him to contest. Because it's OC2. So the Rhino will just tie it. What I really should have done was only normal move the truck and then got the boys out. Because there won't be a, a great way for Harry to go contest that objective. If there's 20 OC of Orc boys on it. Um, just a little, uh, minor thinking now that, you know, seeing the seething way this game panned out, uh, I definitely could have gotten some more primary points by jumping the boys out onto that objective since they wouldn't have even taken that much damage at all. Devastators hopping out of that Rhino. They're going to 
get up close to Miles Rog and just blast him in the face with some big heavy guns, which is pretty sick. Um, this Devastator squad is pretty cool. I think Devastators are pretty underrated, honestly. When they stand still, they ignore cover, which isn't the best ability in the world. But their Cherub allows them to flip a hit. Um, to, I think it's just a hit to a six once per game. So, and that's after they roll. So you can like roll the die, oath of moment, re-roll. Oh, okay, one failed. Boom, it's a six. Everything hit anyway. Um, and then with Vulcan's rerolls, those melted guns are, you know, strength 10 with fire storm, reroll to wound. They're kind of very reliable, which is usually the problem with melted guns, right? Is their strength eight, strength nine. They are have a really hard time wounding tough targets. Whereas ordinarily, you know, in last edition, they were very good at killing T7, T8 vehicles. Now they're not so much because you're winning on fives. Firestorm really flips that on its head because it says, oh, you're wounding on fours now and you're rerolling to wound. I was impressed by the damage from the, the heavier hitters in Firestorm this game. So these Centurions are getting out. Uh, Salt Centurions are pretty cool. They have a bunch of bolter shots. Uh, they have a couple melted guns. Uh, and then in melee, they have a bunch of attacks at flat three damage with sustain two against monsters and vehicles. So they're pretty good at punking light monsters and not not medium monsters and vehicles, I'd say. Like anything in Rhino chassis or below is pretty much guaranteed dead. And they might be able to do some severe damage to something like Mazrog if they if they try hard enough. Mazrog's the oath target. So here we go. Big shots rattling in. Um, I decided not to minus one to wound. Mazrog's kind of just a something I usually throw up in the early game to try to get my opponent to commit stuff so I can get a wog on him. And here we go. Harry has committed at this point. He's got five tactical Marines out here. He's got five Devastators for me to munch on. He's got the Centurions and the Land Raider. So I have my work cut out for me in this next turn. I'm going to have a lot of things to attack and um, I will certainly do so. So we've got I think the Meltas rattle in and do five to him. Last cannon, I think, does another two. And then, unfortunately, the Centurions, um, with their extra strength on their Meltas from Firestorm, end up killing Mazrog, which was really unfortunate. I was thinking it was going to take a little more work from Harry there. He's got some rerolls from Oath, but Vulcan's ability isn't actually triggering right now. So I, I thought that the T10 four up in Vuln was going to be a little harder to get through. Should have maybe considered minus one to wound, but. At the end of the day, Mazrog's just there, like I said, to get him to commit. He's not really that good in the Space Marines at all. He uh, is terrible at dealing damage to them because of the armor saves and armor of contempt and just the way his damage kind of is wasted into most of the two wound bodies. So, bit of a bummer that he just died immediately for no reason, but not for no reason. He died without having done any damage himself, but I have gotten Harry to commit here, which is nice. Random shots rattling in. Um, we wounded this truck a little bit. And we've killed Malzrog. And obviously those Storm Boys get vaporized by the Land Raider. So. There we are. We're moving into turn two now. And I have a critical decision before I do anything else. You should always make sure your Oric opponent does their WOG decision before they roll any dice. Draw any secondaries. Get CP from their Gretchen. All that kind of good stuff. So I have a decision here if I want to wall or not, and I think I will. The reason why is Harry's put a bunch of stuff in my face. Um, these Vanguard veterans, unfortunately, are in a prime position to counterattack. I should have maybe... Uh, I'll talk about what I should have done after I just talk about the dynamics of this turn right now. I have the assets I need to hit Harry hard here. This knob unit is going to hit ungodly hard just by charging straight in. Gazel can do plus two advance and charge, hit the Raider and the... Uh, whatchamacallits the centurions and that should result in the centurions absolutely dying and the land raider taking some heat potentially dying as well so with all that in mind i think the time is now to go in um i can hit harry hard enough and more importantly once i hit him i'll have guys on all three of these objectives and with with that kind of positioning, I'll be in a spot where, you know, he can retaliate, he can do a bunch of damage to me, but I'll have something, things like fight on death. I'll have redundant units inside of transports so that I can continue to endure and hopefully win the, the long-term grind on these objectives. So, 
end up calling the walk here. And fortunately, my card draws reward me for my decision to walk. They give uh, extend battle lines and overwhelming force. So if I all I do this turn is charge my army out into these three objectives, I should hopefully be able to get 10 points. The land raiders on the objectives, the is on the an objective, the centurions are on an objective, and the rhino in the upper left is as well. So if all goes well, I'll be able to get five both on extend battle and five on overwhelming as well. So we end up going for a tag play with this truck, trying to run in and tag these Devastators, which would have been huge. It's about an 8-inch charge right now because of an unfortunately low advance roll. I rolled a 1. And then these Gretchen here are just going to outnumber their Vanguard veterans on the objective while tagging the Rhino to prevent it from doing things next turn. So Gretchen totally will die. It's not the end of the world. Um, we've got Gaskell's unit using plus 2 advance and charge, running out toward the Land Raider. They're definitely going to take some heat from that land raider. In particular, the plus one strength from Firestorm means that those strengths six flamers go to seven and they win the Mega Knobs on three. So that strength rate point is really nasty. Um, ends up killing a Mega Knob and a half and then a lucky assault cannon bullet kills the one wound Mega Knob, which was pretty darn unfortunate. Um, I would have re-rolled that save if I could, but unfortunately I had to re-roll the advance roll in the movement phase. So I didn't have that CP re-roll available. Pig bummer, honestly. Um, but we got the pigs moving in as well, and hopefully their anti-vehicle monster 4-up status should be able to put some hurt on the Land Raider. What I've done here is something I always try to espouse a little bit when I'm playing 40k. Have your units fulfill multiple roles at once, right? These pigs are charging in to be OC on the objective, but I'm also worried about him ingressing over here, because it is turn 2 now. If he ingresses his Vanguard veterans down here along the bottom of the board edge, he can run and take my home field on turn two. And I really don't want all of these units here in my army. Pigs, Beast Naga Boys, Knobs. They're charging. They're going straight in, right? My home field is going to be empty. There's going to be like maybe a truck back there and the Gretchen. That won't be able to beat 10 Vanguard veterans. So I don't want him showing up on my home field for at least another three, four turns. Two or three turns, I'd say. So this pig is going to sacrifice a little bit of its movement forward in order to screen out the Vanguard veterans. So this is way too many arrows. Screen out the Vanguard veterans. So instead of landing here, they're landing here. And at that point, 24 inches is here and he'll carry will be able to charge me. So that's the idea there. Not only are they running in and causing some havoc, but they're also screening out. So the rapid ingress is less brutal. This truck dumps out its boys. Uh, they're going to hopefully wail on that Rhino a little bit and kill most of the Devastator unit. This is one of the weaknesses of Firestorm is it's, you know, it can advance and shoot is really good, but there's no fallback and shoot, there's no fallback and charge. So if you try bog, if you start bogging things down in combat, then they lose a lot of agency. And, you know, shooting in combat with vehicles and that kind of thing is, is good, but, uh, you know, it's not nearly as good as moving, advancing, and shooting with full efficiency. So Vanguard Veterans coming in hot here. Harry realizes I am just bum rushing him at this point and he needs every activation possible uh, next turn to try to cut through all this meat that I'm putting in his face. So the Vanguard Veterans Ingress, uh, they'll be able to use, um, it will be going into bottom of two here, so they'll be able to use the Devastating Wounds on Flame Weapons strat for free, which will be sick. And that should be able to roast and toast um, some knobs slash Gaskell using it pretty good. And that gets around one of Gaskell's big defenses, right? Which is he's tough. He's a two-up armor. He's got one random idiot with a two-up invuln in there. That's really tough to, to for people to deal with and order correctly into. And the devastating wound strat, it's like, no, nah, dude, just take 12 mortals. You're dead. So that'll be tough. Got Gaskell charging into the Raider. Gaskell is one of the hardest hitting units in the, not hardest hitting units in the game, but just it's fun how much of a niche he fills, right? Like he hits hard in a very conventional way. He's ultra strong. He has decent AP and he just punches you in the face for four damage a time. He's like such a fun, unique offensive profile. And I, I love Gaskell for that. So uh, yeah, if, if you haven't seen him so far this edition, he's got seven attacks during the wall. Um, at strength 15, minus 3, 4 damage. 6 is explode because of the Orc's army ability, or the uh, detachment ability. 
And then Makari has a 12 inch aura during the Wa turn of Orcs have lethal hits with melee weapons, which is dope. And then um, Gaskell gives the Meganobs. So, so when Gaskell's leading a unit, the the unit oh, he can only join Meganobs. When he's leading a unit of Meganobs, he gives the whole unit plus one to hit and wound. And when Ga when Meganobs uh, are wogging, they have their unit gets devastating wounds. So they kind of complement each other. He gives them plus one to hit and wound. They give him devastating wounds. And Meganobs have twin kill saws. So the reroll to wound uh, can fish for some devastating, which I oh, I forgot about. I should have just fished for devastating. Because the Meganob is strength 13 right now. He's wounding that land raider on twos because of the plus one to wound. Oh, I'm an idiot. I need to think about these things. It's okay. I've, I have not played Gaskell that much. So uh, I am definitely allowed to make mistakes here. Um, even though in an ideal world, I would not. So rolling in here, um, Harry's a little light on CP. He had to, uh, I think he had to reroll something random on turn one, and then he just had to ingress, and he scored both of his turn one secondaries. So he's running a little light. He just ran out uh, by using AOC, but we're just swinging in here. No risk of an interrupt. Gretchen do a little damage to the truck, whatever. Um, the Beast Naga boy swinging in, swing in, kill three of the Devastators, and do four or five damage to the Rhino. Rhino survives at the end of the day, but it's all right. I've got some Beast Naga uh, pigs on the objective and same with the truck. So that objective is still mine for the time being. And here what we've done is just kind of staged up a little bit of a second wave. These three pigs and these Snagas are going to be ready to run in and do some more, call some more may mayhem once the wog is over. We swing in with these purple pigs. Um, Harry spent some time here thinking about where he wants to AOC. Unfortunately, these... Centurions are just ultra dead. So it doesn't really matter if he AOCs there. They're just going to take enough saves from the knobs that they're going to die at the end of the day. They're just four wounds. So they will just kind of get ground pounded by enough damage to saves, even if he's taking three ups. So he decides to let them die and AOC the land raider, which is the right call. On average, I think the land raider definitely dies here. But giving yourself four up saves definitely leaves an option to, uh, to make some magic happen. And I think he made the right call in trying to keep the raider alive. So pigs going in, unfortunately their AP1 just kind of bouncing off the land raider. And this is why I like pigs as a skirmishing unit, not as a damage dealer, is because they're not very good against medium infantry. They're not very good against vehicles, other than very light vehicles. They're really they're why they're good is because they're somewhat fast. They have an assault weapon, they're OC2, and they're hard to kill. They don't actually do much damage. So um, completely bounce off the land raider here, unfortunately. And Gaskell uh, runs in, smashes the land raider. Unfortunately, he rolls four ones to hit, which was a big bummer. Um, definitely missing that ninth edition reroll to hit aura. Um, but less rerolls is real for everyone except for CSM, which is pretty sick. And so he Gaskell slams uh, eight damage on the land raider. And then his Megadon buddy, I think, picks up two more damage. And then we got the knobs swinging in. Uh, they massacre those tactical marines, unsurprisingly. And then the six other knobs and the... I don't even think I need to use the war boss's attacks. The six other knobs slaughter the uh, centurions, just completely slaughter, completely annihilate them. And then I have a choice here of whether or not I want to tag the land raider. Um, in general, if there's one vehicle in your opponent's army, and it's like the rest of the army can shoot or the vehicle could shoot, be in combat with that one vehicle, because then, then, then they need to make a choice. Shoot with their important vehicle, or fall the vehicle back, have it not do anything, and the rest of the army can shoot. So, like here, I was initially terrified of the, the knobs just getting roasted by the raider, but A, they're going to get shot by it either way, and B, tagging that raider means I now force him to give up the raider shooting, or give up the shooting of the entire rest of his army. So... All things considered, definitely not the best wall turn here. Um, I hit Harry with, I charged Harry with all the units that I wanted to. Um, but unfortunately, just a couple of whiffs, in particular Gaskell and those three pigs, just doing next to nothing, not next to nothing to the raider. I did 10 damage to it, but definitely should not have done that little damage to it. And uh, that's a bit unfortunate here and is going to make that Raider a headache in the future, especially with it passing its Battleshock test. It means it has access to AOC in the upcoming turn. More importantly, it has access to 
um, Overwatch for my next movement phase. So that's going to be very painful. We got the Vanguard veterans closing in as well, and they're going to do some great work this game, uh, just kind of clearing up this mess of orc meat that's in the middle of the table here. Each Vanguard veteran is a hand flamer. Um, so with the plus one strength from the Firestorm and the reroll wounds from Adrax, not Adrax, I keep saying Adrax, Vulcan, they're going to do some good work at uh, wounding that high orc toughness here. So unfortunately, I only get three on Overwhelming Force. Uh, that Land Raider also denying me two points on that secondary, unfortunately. Um, but I killed the Centurions, which was nice. And then I obviously get extended Battle Lines for five. So I pick up an eight on secondary is not feeling too bad. And that was after a five on the primary. I oftentimes like taking a slower turn, uh, early turns with Orcs, and not just like trying to rush with the pressure. Because I feel like giving, you know, taking maybe an early 15 or two on turn two and three by playing super aggressively often means you peter out uh, in terms of the amount of material you have left on the table. Uh, by the time the mid to late game rolls around and your opponent can really make quick comebacks. So I'm usually happy to concede a five on turn two if it means I'm going to get more primary in the mid game. Harry here draws cleanse and secure no man's land. Cleanse isn't really an option. He needs all of his guns at this point to do damage. Um, in fact, drawing the other action secondary here is a bit of a bummer. So he just kind of concedes that that's not going to happen and uh, melts it down into a CP, which will help uh, withstand, withstand my damage on the future turn with something like an AOC. So Clyde's will be a zero. And then hopefully he'll, I mean, he should be able to kick me off two of these midfields so that'll be a five on no man's land. Target priority in general. I mean, the knobs need to die. They do insane damage to power armor. Uh, and then Gaskell's unit as well. It's such a force multiplier. Even with the Wog turn ending, it's just having him to run in, beat the crap out of stuff, and then tag something else. Like just getting rid of those two units is, is paramount at this point. And unfortunately, I have delivered my army right where Harry wants me, right? Like Firestorm is great at doing damage at close range. That's kind of that's exactly where they want you to be. So he's gonna hit me really hard here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna run out of stuff pretty quick. Um, but we're, it's yet to see because I have put a lot of pressure on him. So we're going to see if he can crack, break out of the uh, the kind of stranglehold I've put him in for now. Um, this bottom right corner is kind of collapsing a little bit. Um, the Gretchen aren't going to put up much of a fight. And if there's some random multi meltas uh, pick up this truck, then my presence is going to basically disappear from the bottom right corner. But... Remember, I have that ingress unit of pigs. Ingressing melee units is a really effective strategy in 10th edition. And um, I think now was a is, a is a great time to kind of show off what you can do with it, which is kind of come at your opponent from an unexpected angle, gain some information. Information is really important in 40k. I have a lot of information now at this point about how the game is going. Um, and so I can make the decisions about where I want my pigs to be with that information in mind at the cost of one CP, right? Like I sacrifice one CP um, on the rapid ingress stratagem and in exchange, I get to position my pigs wherever I want to, more or less. So very good stratagem, good to utilize on melee units in particular. Um, shooting off of board edges, especially on these, these type of boards, GW and WTC boards, easier said than done, right? There's a lot of tough angles. God, the kicking the um rig is really annoying um but yeah getting the angles off off strat reserve on these boards is a serious pain in the ass so it's oftentimes better to just ingress off strat reserve uh, a melee unit and then run out and punch people because you can't hide line of sight from punching So Harry makes the right call here and falls back the Land Raider. For I was thinking, I kept saying, you know, I think you should just you really want the Land Raider's firepower. You really want the Land Raider's firepower. And the Land Raider is pretty ideal, like killing the knobs, especially with the reroll the wound from Vulcan. But it comes at the cost of all of the Vanguard veterans shooting important units, right? It's not worth it to shoot those flamestorm cannons if it means that two squads of devastators and Adrax's uh, Adrax, Vulcan squad. And both squads of hand flamer van vets won't get to shoot. So Harry makes the right call here, falls back to the land raider, gets all of his the rest of his army to activate. I end up ingressing my pigs. I feel like I need some help. Depending on how things go in the middle of the board, they can run up there and charge. 
or they can uh, run to that lower right objective and charge into it and just try to live back there for the rest of the game. So I've got some options now. It all just kind of depends on how this shooting and charge phase uh, pans out. But I am saving some CP here for fight on death. Um, I know that the hand flamers are going to hurt the knobs if he chooses to go there. If he doesn't do the devastating there, it's not going to do very much at all. Um, but I think I assume the devastating is going to go into Gaskell just because it's so much value there um, by bypassing like all of his defense. So that should just melt him, which means that the knobs are more or less going to be untouched going into the charge phase because they'll take some incidental firepower from, you know, add uh, Vulcan squad and some devastators. But there'll probably be like six, seven, eight knobs left in the war boss. Vanguard runs will plow in there. That was his oath target. He'll kill them. I'll fight on death and at least it'll be a trade. So the knobs will have killed the centurions and the, the, the Vanguard veterans at the cost of two CP. Pretty good trade for me, all things considered. Gaskell there goes down. I was I didn't fully appreciate how quick and easy it was going to be for Harry. And this is definitely one thing I need to appreciate about Gaskell is his defense is good, but it doesn't work into everything, right? So things like Immortals, things like this uh, Vanguard veteran combination from Firestorm, those kind of combos are going to be really nasty at uh, taking out a unit like Gaskell that doesn't have a feel no pain, doesn't really have any way to mitigate devastating wounds coming in. And honestly, you know, Gaskell has 10 wounds and the Megas have three each, but at the end of the day, that whole unit has 20 wounds in total. So for a high devastating wound combo like the Immortals or these Vanguard veterans, it's it should be fairly easy for them to do. Here, Harry's deliberating whether or not to shoot his Vanguard veterans at this remnant unit of Beast Naga boys in the upper left or the knobs in the center left. He ends up going with the Beast Naga boys because he's going to have to charge the knobs either way. The Vanguard, the, the Hand Flamers into the knobs with minus one to wound. Uh, the knobs are not minus one to wound when the strength is greater. They're just flat out minus one to wound. It'll kill two, maybe three knobs at most. Uh, and then he'll have to charge anyway and we'll be at the same spot. He'll, he'll, we'll, we'll end up at the same spot that we would have been at if he just charged them with the vanguard veterans and shot somewhere else so he ends up getting the extra value by roasting those beast nagas and this is where i'm really torn with beast nagas guys i i love what they do i love that they're oc2 but 10 and a half points for an orc boy is a lot of points um into people like votan into armies like votan and space rings they just kind of bounce unfortunately because of the higher toughness and the aoc and the lining up into the two and three win models with damage one it's just awkward and kind of sucks um, but you kind of need them because there are armies that spam monsters and vehicles like chaos knights and such as uh, necrons in particular beast naga boys are fantastic because they just clobber Catan. so I think I might just cut down to one squad for those particular matchups. Like, I really need to go hunt down this one random war dog or kill this Catan that's T-posing in the middle of the board. Um, but overall, I've not been impressed with them just as like a melee brawler unit because they die so easily and don't do anything else. Band vets charging in here. I got my two CP. I can choose to interrupt here instead of fighting on death. I'm going to fight on death. I want to just trade with these Vanguard veterans and get them out of here. Excuse me. And here we are. Here's Harry closing out his secure no man's land. Killing those pigs will be pretty easy for the Vanguard vets. Um, yeah, thinking back on the math, that might not actually be true. Because um, they have a 5 up in mold right now, and he's winning on 5s. I guess the lethal hits helps a lot. He should kill enough of them that he'll outnumber me on the objective. But The Captain Vanguard veteran combo is really cool. I'm, I'm, I'll always love seeing Space Marine players experiment because now we can't make the joke that, oh, the Space Marine Codex has so many data sheets, it has 200 data sheets. Now it actually has a somewhat limited number of, of options, right? Compared to, compared to where it was. Like, it's still very fleshed out, but it's cool to see people experiment with, uh, the more limited options than they had previously. It, it's cool. So Van Vet's going in, um, he spends a CP here, he wants these knobs to go to sleep. And seeing the results of this combat now, I definitely agree. Um, he doesn't actually finish off the unit, he gets it down to two knobs on the war boss. And if he hadn't spent that strat, it probably would have been a couple more, which wouldn't have been great. Um, Captain whiffs a little bit, kills one knob. Um, and then we got the Van Vets coming in here. They'll have enough attacks so that they should be able to put most of this unit to sleep here. And then my final death should be pretty brutal as well. 
This is uh, one thing you definitely need to be aware of as uh, the orc is a way to get around AOC, a very problematic stratagem for our codex, is with things like fight on death. Well, with the fight on death stratagem, because uh, there's no, the fight on death triggers, sorry, AOC triggers when an enemy unit declares you at the, as the target of some of its attacks. When I fight on death, you activate model by model. It's not the unit uh, triggering its fight on death ability. Uh, it is model by model triggering a fight on death ability. So just something to keep in mind. Harry can't AOC here, which means these Vanguard veterans are going to be dropping a little faster than usual. So the knobs are slowly being pulled. I'm rolling dice one at a time so that I can decide. I'm showing Harry here. What I aim to do is kill enough of these Van Vets that eventually some of these dying knobs might pile into the Raider. Slowly picking up a couple at a time. Harry's saves were pretty unfortunate this game, just taking four ups and five ups. Uh, sorry, four ups, three ups, four ups, and five ups were all kind of like pretty spiky for him. You can see there I passed him four saves and he failed three. He failed two there. Three more. Uh, three more. Kills two. And he killed seven of the knobs here. So there's going to be, uh, he killed one with shooting. So there will be two knobs and the war boss remaining. And we got one of these knobs activating into the raider. Just hoping to chip it down. I've got some out of phase mortals that I can do to the raider. So if I can get it down to four or even two wounds, then that's the point where uh, the, you know, the squig mines from this healthy squad of squigs might kill it. So I don't have to worry about overwatch. Um, or like a, a clutch grenade from the re this, the remnants of this knob unit, something like that. Oh, excuse me. Getting late. So overall, I think Harry did a really good job here. Prioritizing the things he needed to prioritize. Not getting too greedy and trying to kill more than he than he could. Um, and just trying to, to lock down parts of the board. Um, he did a great job kind of kicking me out of this quarter, not under committing to killing those Gretchen. There's like three of them left. That's at the end. At this point, that objective is his. And then this as well has a bunch of Edgar veterans on it. They can definitely, they're definitely going to get hit this next turn, but they might not die. And that means that uh, Harry can continue to fight for that objective. This one as well. Uh, this one will still be under my control, but he did a great job of just clearing the stuff off of that objective. So overall, I lost. Uh, let's see here. We lost. Snagas, most of the knobs, Gazkel, three pigs, ten Gretchen, truck. So we took a whole bunch of losses this turn. Much more of my army as a proportion than Harry did, which is unfortunate. So at this point, I didn't fully realize it, but I am definitely down on material, and I'm gonna have to start playing points catch up to try to, or not points catch up because I'm actually winning right now, but just trying to play the points rather than winning the material war. And a little bit of that revolves around just getting rid of some of these units. So. Here I am fighting with my knobs. I want to get rid of these Vanguard vets. I want to put some more damage on that raider. And then hopefully in my turn, I can kill that raider and kill this big squad of uh, dudes right in my face. Kill this rhino, kill this devastator. Just get some of these units out of my face so that Harry will kind of be down to these like remnants of, sh of shooting units in his backboard. That's going to be easier said than done because he hit me a lot harder than I was anticipating this upcoming, this, this last turn. So we'll see how it all pans out. Harry's going to get a nice solid five on secure no man's land. And then cleanse obviously gets recycled into a CP. So he'll be going up to two in the upcoming turn, which will be great because that gives him the most important two stratagems, overwatch AOC. So he'll have those available to him in the upcoming turn, which is huge. Whereas, you know, maybe he could have scored another card for a couple points, but that would have been one less second. That would have been one less uh, command point available to him. And sometimes it's just worth accepting that you won't get a card. And getting that CP out of it can give you a lot of gas in a situation like this where we're just kind of brawling and someone's going to come out on top. One CP can be the difference between victory and defeat in those kind of scenarios. So good, good on Harry for recognizing that. This coming turn, I got a 15, which is going to be big. Like I said, I'm losing the material war, so it's going to be big for me to... Um, get as many points as possible. So getting a 15 here is great. And I want to try to put Harry down to, I can't really do anything about this home and I can't really do anything about the side objective. But if I can put him down to a 10 instead of a 15, 
I'll be pretty happy. That'll delay his uh, his kind of like push into the left side of the board for another turn, which will be big. So pigs are moving up. Uh, the land raider's down to two because a clutch knob got another wound through and scratched down to two wounds. So I'm going to throw two bomb squigs at it. And hopefully, 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 um, we'll take it out. Because uh, all I need to do is roll a two up with one of them and then do two wounds with that successful squig. Oh, there it is. One of them fails. And then the one that goes through does one wound. Sad, sad, sad days. Very unfortunate. Um, and then unfortunately, also what I've done here is block myself with this building. 10 inch move with the mounted keyword. Usually ain't the end of the world because of the advancing charge from the wall. But really what I should have done here was send some squigs this way, send some squigs this way. So even if a short charge is rolled, you know, these guys can still go the short distance this way and then get a pile in, which gets you, we'll just get more models. I'm going to be a little bit bottlenecked here, which is going to be kind of a headache. Um, and deny me uh, some models activating unless I roll a very large charge. What I draw for secondaries this turn is uh, behind enemy lines and capture outpost. Yep. I think about recycling outpost this turn. I end up not going for it because I only have, I think, one CP right now. My fucking Gretchen haven't given me a single one. Bastards. Um, so it's a bit of a bummer. Uh, I just don't have a lot of resources right now to devote to secondary scoring, even though, like I said, I'm trying, I mean, I'm in points factory mode right now, not kill Harry's army mode. Um, not trying to table him anymore by any stretch of the imagination. So I would love to deny, I would love to recycle one of those cards, but don't really have that option here. I need the CP for a, a charge roll or a fives explode somewhere or a tank shock. I need to kill this one wound raider somehow. So Harry overwatches with the Raider, unsurprisingly. I'm going to roast these knobs. Uh, the idea is get rid of them before they throw a grenade because the knobs have the grenades keyword. Uh, they would be able to use that CP to pretty much guarantee that Raider goes bye-bye. And then that means that the rest of my uh, kind of assets here can kind of run around in the mid board with impunity. And I've got some trucks here. Trucks are going to be really good for bogging down Vulcan squad for a while. Uh, because they have a bunch of like strength six and seven attacks, it's great to just tag them in combat. No fallback and charge, no advance. Uh, sorry, no fallback and charge, no fallback and shoot. So just getting them in combat means they just stay there for a while. Um, I forgot to mention, this is Vulcan's funny objective. Vulcan picks a objective at the start of the game. Uh, he, while he is on that funny objective, he's OC 10, 15, something insane. Four at Feel No Pain and Leadership 5. Which, you know, sounds like the only part of that that's relevant is the four of feel no pain. But good God, is it hard to dislodge that man if he's like hiding behind his funny objective and you're just trying to steal it from him. It just does not happen. So super cool. I mean, Vulcan is just kind of sick. Like he gives a good offensive buff. He himself is good in combat. And he he he's he's he has a fun like salamander esque ability where he just like plants himself and refuses to yield. It's super sick. I love salamanders. Um, so we got the Snagas piling out here, charging in on the Vanguard veterans. So I figure out, figure with the Wa not active anymore, I don't have the extra tax on these pigs. I'm going to need as much help as I can uh, muscling through these Vanguard veterans. So end up charging them with the Snagga boys as well, which will just add a couple extra saves on them. Uh, and here we landed our Strong Boys back here. They're going to be behind enemy lines, so that'll get me a 5 on behind instead of a 3, which will be nice. And then we just got some charges, cleaning up some stuff here. Pigs will kill this car, which will be nice. This truck will hope to run over that guy. Um, and with the knobs dying, I unfortunately did not get to grenade the raider. So what I'm going to do is charge it with the truck and hope that the truck can tank shock it to death. I don't run my trucks with wrecking balls. A lot of people have asked me why this is. There's a very simple reason. It increases the width of the truck at the midpoint of the model, which is the, the part that makes it most difficult to navigate around terrain and the most difficult to hide adequately. Well, oh, yes, the most difficult to hide adequately. Um, increases the width of the truck by like 60, 50 to 60 percent. It makes it quite a bit wider. Um, people that tank shock you with wrecking balls without having the wrecking ball modeled are just modeling for advantage. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. Um, there's a very significant downside to not running the wrecking ball. Um, Sorry, to running the Wrecking Ball. So um, I have chosen to not take it. 
other people could choose to take it. There's, that's definitely a choice. Um, it's a good one. It makes the tank shock a lot better. But if you don't run a wrecking ball and you tank shock people uh, with the said truck at strength 10, then I'm sorry, you're cheating. So uh, don't do that. And don't get don't get got by that either. There's a lot of work players that don't know the rules, unfortunately. Um, these pigs roll a four on their charge. Ugh, gross. Um, so only three of them get to fight. Harry ends up biffing his saves pretty hard here, which is unfortunate, but was definitely made up for by my poor charge roll. Um, and I think there are like one or two of these Vanguard veterans and the captain left at the end of this, which honestly, considering I wasn't wogging and how few models got to attack, really spoke to uh, how poor Harry rolled on his saves here. So the models are kind of melting. You can see a little bit of frustration there from our boy. And considering uh, this is the top of battle round three, so he's not going to, this is the end of his, with the other captain dead, he figures, I'm just going to AOC for free here. Um, this is probably the best use I'm going to get out of the strat, um, considering the other captain is dead. So may as well just save a CP and AOC for free on this unit. Because we're in a new battle round and does not end up, and, well, I mean, saves his unit from death, but does not save many of them, unfortunately. There's one Van Vet and the captain left. Vulcan squad's going to pile in, tickle the truck a little bit. This is something to do with your rhinos, trucks, piranhas, devilfish. I'm trying to think of other little crappy units like that. Um, when it comes down to these like brawly fights, it's just charge your opponent and bog them down. Uh, especially units that can't fall back and do... I mean, even the units that can fall back and do stuff, right? Tax your opponent resources. If they can fall back and shoot and charge, just because they can do that doesn't mean they want to. It usually costs them a resource. Go and tag them and make them spend a CP if it's in your best interest. Uh, in this case, he can't do any of those things. So I am just in combat there until he either falls back or shoots my truck to death, which he definitely can do, but I don't think he wants to shoot Meltas at trucks at this point. I've got a bunch of dudes in his face. Um, Vanguard veterans are scratching back a little bit. We had a little bit of a discussion. Uh, that captain was actually out of combat. He was here. This is us talking about it. So he could have chosen to not pile in, fought with the one van vet, then pulled the van vet to coherency, had the captain available to go do stuff next turn, maybe run over here, get a lucky charge on my Gretchen. Uh, you know, he drew a cleanse already, but you know, just having a unit at this point when there's such little, we're basically down to scraps in the center of the table, right? Would have been big. In this case, he ended up rolling a dice before like thinking about it. So he's like, I'm just going to, I've seen the dice. I'm just going to stick with that. And he ended up doing well. I think he killed four or five orcs, something like that. But um, what the hell was I saying? Oh, that was a genuine choice, whether or not he wanted to attack with the captain or have the captain to do stuff in his turn. So interesting to think about. I think he made the right call, though. He just kind of, like, wants damage at this point. And A, losing a Space Marine for free, and B, giving up six good attacks seems bad. I get a five on behind and discard outpost for a CP, so I'll go up to three in Harry's turn, which will be, oh, no, I have tank shock, so I'll go up to two in Harry's turn. The Devastator falls back, passes his morale check. Um, we've got the Rhino circling around the corner here. Ordinarily wouldn't be able to quite get line of sight, but the Firestorm advance and shoot. Actually, no, he doesn't advance and shoot. He moves the Rhino and gets out. And we got the Tactile Marines uh, running out here. Going to pour some uh, fire into the into the pigs. They've got a Melta and a, uh, a Melta gun and a multi Melta, which will be some nice extra damage on that unit. With the wall no longer active, unfortunately, these pigs at T7, 4 up armor. It's kind of like the ideal profile for the melting guns to shoot at, especially using Vulcan's reroll the wound. Uh, it means that unit will die a lot quicker than I am at all used to, uh, which is going to be painful, unfortunately. So we got some dudes disembarking. The thinking here is I don't, I'm not going to be able to really respond to them very adequately. So get disembarking means he gets the extra two heavy weapon shots, right? Because if he shoots out of the Rhino, it'll be four multi multi shots. Whereas if he gets out right now, it's four multi multi shots plus the two LAS cannons. Salamanders also have a strat for when they disembark. Uh, they get plus one to hit. And if they kill a model, I take a battle shock test. 
Oh, we forgot about that. Um, that was big because they definitely killed a model. And if you get battle shocked while you're under the effects of a stratagem, the effects of that stratagem drop off, right? Because you can't be affected by a stratagem while you're battle shocked. So even if you've already used something like Art as Nails or Armor of Contempt, um, wow, or the Nurgle strat. Interesting. That's cool. Um, then you cannot continue to benefit from that strat, is my understanding. So I've whittled down Harry quite a bit here in the mid board, but I've killing all of his melee units in the land raider means that what he has left is like two full strength squads of Devastator Marines that are benefiting from Vulcan's rule. So I'm going to take some heat here for sure, and that's going to be painful. Um, Harry kind of debating here where to bring his scouts in. Obviously, the scouts up down every single turn, so they're just going to end up coming in and making sure those two Gretchen go away. Um, nothing too complicated from them. Scouts are a great unit. You should take every list should have honestly more than Harry has, but I'm sure his points are tight in ways they don't understand. You got to fit the tactical Marines in. <laughs> um, but yeah, every list, in my opinion, should have at least two squads of scouts. They're just fucking ridiculous. Infiltrate, scout, 55 points, 10 wounds, four up armor, Vanguard to run away, up down every turn. <laughs> Sick, dude. Gretchen die. We're going to start pouring in the multi melts here. I end up using minus one to wound, thinking, you know, he's hitting on threes and fours, rerolling from Oath, wounding on fours, rerolling from Vulcan's ability. Maybe I'll, you know, have some, he'll get some low damage rolls in the field and keep me alive. Apparently not, dude. Getting shot by two Devastator squads and one Tactical Marine multi melta killed the entire squad. I don't know if I just like rolled every single wound success, re-rolled every wound into a success. It definitely felt like it. I was a little pissed after this because I'm like, what the hell was this activation? That should not have happened. But all the pigs died to those, uh, you know, eight heavy weapons, which is basically every weapon getting a kill, which seems a little ridiculous to me. But what do I know? Um, so unfortunately, that squad is basically gone, which I was hoping to have those remnants uh, in the in the late game here, but they will be dying. I am dead. And then the last real unit I have here at this point, I've got two. I've got this remnant snaga unit, which, you know, isn't much, but it is OC2 on that objective, and I haven't used my auto pass yet. And then I've got these pigs here, which are a fairly real unit at this point. So the Devastators are just going to be, that was, that was the Tactical Marines and this Devastator squad just killed six pigs. What the fuck was that, Harry? That was bullshit, dude. And then the last Devastator squad gets to split fire because the first two popped off, kills the knob on Smash the Squig and does uh, whiffs on the truck, unfortunately. And then Harry kept rolling twos on his Hunter Killer missile shooting into combat, which was hilarious. So, unfortunately, this Hunter Killer in the upper right misses on the truck. He's got some hand flamers into combat here. And then what's going to end up happening is the Devastators are going to charge, provide their OC on the objective. The boys aren't much of a threat to them anymore uh, with so few attacks and a depleted squad anyway. Should be good to just get the OC on the objective and hopefully take that from me. I do have a clutch CP in the tank, though, so minus one to wound there should mean that enough of the orcs survive that. It is my objective at the end of the day. Harry charges in, which is the right play. Um, this turn, by the way, he drew extend battle lines and storm hostile. So take objective from me and hold a midfield objective. Easy peasy. He's going to get a 10 on this. Piling in and fighting. Here's minus one to wound. Should mean that the boys don't really take much heat at all. Power Fist coming in hot, gets a wound, crushes an orc, and then here's the, yeah, here's the, you know, eight swings from the dudes. Of course, somehow ends up with two wounds and probably going to kill two. Oh, no, kills one. Oh, wounds the knob. Yes, forgot about that. Ah, uh, because I'm going to get to swing next and I wanted maximal attacks. So I swing into the Vanguard Veterans. Um, here, Harry decides to, ah, there's a clutch decision and he definitely made the right decision here uh, and it paid off big time, but regardless, he made the right decision. He can choose to either spend his one CP that he saved because he free stratted last turn on plus one to wound when targeting my truck with Vulcan squad, which would clear me off that objective, guarantee him a storm hostile objective as well as, 
um, prevent five points on the primary for me because that truck is OC2, beats out the Devastator. Or he could sp actually spend that CP on AOC here with the Vanguard Veterans. He goes with the right call, which is go for the guaranteed play, which is kill the truck with Pulse 1 to wound. Why does that matter so much? Well, it's a bigger swing, gets him extend battle lines, and it gets him um, five points off my primary. Uh, but more importantly, there's still always a chance over here that the uh, Marines can just survive the four or five remaining orcs and 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 live. You know, even if I kill the one Vanguard veteran, the captain will probably survive, and then that means that that objective is not too bad, and the captain will get to fight all that kind of stuff. So Harry made the right call here. It was kind of a tough one because he has this one CP. We wanted to make sure we were making the right choice. Um, we end up going with the plus one to wound, which pays off big time here. So doesn't end up AOCing those Vanguard veterans. And despite my good rolling here, I got seven hits, three wounds, passes all the four ups. Oh, pain. Armor saves. Impossible. And then I do, let's see, nine wounds to him there. And he passes eight of them. So I don't even kill the Vanguard veteran. So despite Harry's earlier poor saves, uh, big swing there and uh, is going to mean that those boy, those five remaining orcs, which might otherwise get me that primary, are going to take some heat from the, the Vanguard veteran who took one wound, then turn around and kill four orcs. OK, and then the captain killed the last guy. So pretty big swing there, unfortunately, that I was kind of relying on either of these to work. Either the truck lives or the Vanguard veterans die slash the boys live, you know, um, and neither of those panned out, unfortunately, which don't ask me how a four attack Vanguard veteran with no rerolls to hit or wound killed four orcs, but apparently that happened. Truck exploded, luckily, which did a little bit of damage, but at this point, it's not about damage. It's about getting the points killing a couple space greens doesn't really matter so um i'm really coming down to the scraps here and i'm gonna try to fight as hard as i can to to keep this a close game because things are definitely slipping out of my control uh, a couple of those swings that short charge on the pigs in, in conjunction with my mistake not moving them around the terrain properly getting them all bottled up right here is costing me big time because that was a cascading Problem, which caused the Vanguard veterans to survive, which means that they hit back and killed five orcs. And then in the next turn, they survived again and hit a back and killed the rest of the Beast Naga squad. So instead of him not having Vanguard veterans and me living on that objective with seven pigs and ten Beast Nagas, he's alive on that objective with a captain and five Devastators. So poor decision making and some unfortunate dice kind of confirming my... Uh, my poor play, I, I'm glad they did because it's going to make me not make that mistake again, um, means that Harry is now firmly the driver's seat of this game. So I'm just going to try to scrap it for as many points as I can. This turn's pretty interesting. I draw Investigate Signal and Area Denial. Signal, unfortunately, is only going to be a two. These Storm Boys up here are going to end up deploying a signal. There is not quite enough space um, to have the Gretchen investigate a signal back here. Uh, because this objective, I measured it, is like... Gretchen moves six and investigates at a nine. So 15 inches is like right here, just shy of the objective. So I can't hold the objective while being signalable. Signalable. So um, investigate's only going to be a two. Um, but the other one I draw is area denial. So area denial is good here. Uh, Harry's not with within three with any units. So that means that uh, that truck who's in the mid board here can just kind of zip over and get a baby, baby area denial. But he could also try charging this four-wound captain who took some damage from the explosion and tank shocking him. And again, a situation where having the wrecking ball would have been huge, but I don't have him. Nonetheless, I'm rolling six dice, two more because uh, my strength is greater than his toughness. So I'll roll eight dice and I'm looking for four five ups to kill him. Unlikely, but definitely not outside the realm of possibility. And I also end up moving these pig, uh, pigs up because worst case scenario, they'll deny five on the primary right here on this uh, second objective. And uh, they can also provide a nine inch charge on this captain. So which will obviously be way more likely to kill him than the truck. So we got some overwatch coming in from the Devastators using their flip a six from the cherub to get some great overwatch value. Uh, unfortunately, fails to wound. So uh, truck survives. And there we go. We're just doing some random stuff. We're shooting him with some random guns. Three wounds from the big shooter. He does a wound. That might be clutch. 
Captain's down to three. And at this point, we're just scrapping because if we can make this charge slash kill him with a tank shock, then not only will we get two extra points on area dial, but we'll also deny five in the primary. So really just kind of getting down to the wire here, digging for scraps and uh, seeing what we can come up with. At this point, I have to decision whether or not I want to reroll the knight in charge or go for the tank shock. It gets me the same number of points either way, so going for the more probable play is better, regardless of the position of the, the pigs, even though I'd ra obviously rather them get in there and get stuck in. The more likely way to kill the captain is with a tank shock at this point, because a knight in charge is pretty unlikely. So I go, in, I go for it, I charge with the truck, and I land it, and here comes my eight dice with the tank shock. And we take them out. There's our three mortals. Captain goes splat. And at this point, we've killed all the Vanguard veterans, which is sick. End up not piling in because obviously I don't want to get him to get more OC on the objective. We're tied two to two at this point. So that's a five on air denial and a two on signal for me. Honestly, all things considered, considering how, I mean, accounting for how god awful the board state looks at this point juncture uh that's that's pretty good <laughs> not too bad at all here we just got uh harry's scouts returning to the shadows and coming back in here to prey on my home field a little bit now that my screens have kind of disappeared um he draws overwhelming force and no prisoners here which is uh i know i unfortunately have served up two overwhelming and no prisoners active uh you know units in his face so he's going to be able to kill them no problem and get a bunch of points from that which is unfortunate but i make the decision i the decisions I made were at the time the correct ones because I didn't know what he was going to draw and I just wanted to points maximize. So Rhino car driving up, getting some shots on the truck. Um, he's going to get a five on overwhelming, no problem. It's going to be easy for these Devastators and Vulcan's goon squad to mop up the rest of the, the last truck and the last of these pigs here, uh, which will get him a solid nine on secondaries. And if he can randomly kill like these uh, Gretchen or this truck, then he'll get some extra points as well. Closing in in the end of the game here, we are now at bottom of four. Um, my my plan to kind of limit Harry's primary has only panned out to a minor degree. We both got fives on turn two. On turn three, I got a 15. He got a 10. So got a little bit of a lead there. But then uh, we've devolved into tens now at this point because of a couple of swings that have gone Harry's way, uh, especially on this objective here. I was looking to maybe deny five more points, get five more points myself just by keeping that unit of snag is alive on the subjective for another turn didn't work because of a couple of little dice spikes in there uh so it goes um but the the primary plan has has kind of devolved a little bit and he is catching up on secondaries as well these later turns he's gonna draw some pretty ideal stuff that means that he gets you know rewarded when i put cheap units in his face for killing them he draws capture enemy outpost on turn five where well you know obviously this is going to happen at this point with how much he's closing in on my home field um and uh, he, he's just drawing stuff that's basically automatic at this point he's all he needs to do is shoot charge the thing in front of him get 10 points kind of stuff so and we're rattling in some shots obviously my remaining units are dying he's doing some damage to the truck and then he's going to go for a nine inch charge i think this is the last of the piddly shooting uh the more important charge to go for here is this one because this is a guaranteed primary deny whereas this one uh scouts nece won't necessarily kill gretchen and gretchen or oc2 so they'll always beat out the scouts on the objective which means that uh this is the better objective this is uh, you always want to order the charges uh, in the uh, sequence the charges in the order of importance right so this one is the more important one so he would command point this one uh before command pointing this one so you want the knowledge of whether or not this top left one will succeed before making the bottom left one scouts fail all right sorry he charges in with that vulcan squad fails rerolls passes so well done there on the sequencing and then in the bottom left here the scouts fail that's not the end of the world do a little damage to the truck not too bad Harry here picks up a four on prisoners for killing the truck and the snaggas. I'm sorry, the truck and the swing car boys. And then he gets five on overwhelming force by killing uh, a truck and a unit of pigs. So those two units unfortunately gave up nine points there. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Didn't really fully appreciate how silly that was, but okay. Um... Cleanse and Defend Stronghold are my draws in the last turn. 
Um, I've already scrapped an objective on turn four. I forget, did not mention that. I forgot exactly what I got rid of, but it was something basically unachievable. And I was realizing I was running out of stuff, so I just wanted to get a cycle in while I had this units available in my army still. Gretchen trying to stay alive on the objective, it's not going to avail them, despite my best efforts. There's just not really anything to do at that point. Scouts and five Devastators will be able to kill six Gretchen and take the objective. Fall back here, I draw Defend Stronghold, that's the reason those Gretchen are trying so hard to stay alive, and Cleanse, and I'll be able to get a Cleanse here, so that'll be a nice three victory points as a consolation prize in the last turn. But that's all I'm going to get. I'll finish off with a 5 on the primary and 3 on cleanse. Harry's going to get a 15 at the end of the game, unsurprisingly. Draws tempting target and, and capture enemy outpost at that point. <laughs> of course. Uh, so that's a solid 13 on secondaries. So all things considered, Harry ends up winning this game somewhat convincingly 71 to 90. So he beats me by 19 points. That's a 13-7 in teams. And uh, in terms of primary secondary differences here, I got 35 on the primary, he got 40. So that end, those end of game swings and a couple of the, uh, the mid game endurance of the Salamanders kind of working out in their favor here, getting them a five point primary lead over the orcs. And then a 26 to 40 in his favor on the secondaries. So a pretty convincing win on the secondaries, especially in the back half of the game, drawing seven points of actions on turn one. And then on turn three, getting 10, turn four, getting nine, turn five, getting 13. When I was trying to do with stress's ability to score points was definitely kind of rough. So well done to Harry here. I really enjoyed this game. Um, seeing the Firestorm hard at work here was pretty sick. I haven't seen a lot of these units on the table. Like, obviously, obviously seen the Redeemer, and I think I've watched Vulcan Squad activate a little bit. But uh, getting to see, like, the Firing Deck Rhino Spam in conjunction with these cool Vanguard Veteran Bricks that no one's really run before was really cool. So, well done to him. It's a, it's a cool archetype and very unique. And I think he's built something pretty cool here. Um, it obviously has its his weaknesses. Like it doesn't really do melee anything other than the, the Vanguard veterans and a little bit from the assault sense. And uh, you know, it does take a lot of heat from high AP armies because nothing in our list has an invuln at all, like zero invulns whatsoever, which is pretty unfortunate. But um, it can definitely when it does its thing, it definitely does it very well. Vulcan's Vulcan is sick, and uh, I just I love that he is good right now in his detachment. It's pretty dope. So great game to Harry. Uh, always love playing this mission. Uh, in particular, it like, forces a lot of fights all across the board, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, was definitely a bloody one and was a lot of fun, a lot of learning opportunities. And good to see a couple of the units I took to try to deal with Space Marines a little bit in their element. Um, didn't end up getting me the win, but it was cool when they did the thing that I wanted them to do. In particular, the knobs. This game really impressed me. Running in, bashing those Centurions over the head killing those tactical marines getting charged by the van bets you know they harry could have dedicated shooting to them but they would have soaked up a lot of it with the minus one to win in t5 and then getting that fight on death to just like do more damage to the raider i think they did four damage to the raider killed five attack marines killed 10 vanguard veterans and the captain and killed the salt sense so just like so much damage unfortunately a bit of a rough game for gazi um the devastating wounds flamer just flamer bombs kind of counter the shit out of him, which is unfortunate. Um, and a bit of a whiff on that land rider meant that he just basically did nothing except for provide his lethal, lethal hits war once. So a bit of a bummer, but uh, still a big fan of him and uh, how much work he does buffing up, supporting the army and being a bullet soak. Hope you guys enjoy the game. I uh, hope everyone is having a lovely new year and I'm looking forward to much more content in 2024. Um, so take care, y'all.